and welcome to SeaWorld Splash to the Past podcast, which is now changed to SeaWorld Splash podcast. Yes, we have shortened our name just a bit, but it's still the same fun podcast with your favorite Splash team. I'm your host, Rose, and this week we'll be doing a solo podcast, while my other half of my team, Joseph and Neil, are out on the field doing some important research for future podcasts. So I want to get into some topics which are quite important, as well as do a quick review on an amazing book, which I recently read called Killing Keiko. I do apologize if my microphone is acting up, so please bear with me. So now on to the current news. If you have not yet heard, Kamagawa SeaWorld in Japan has teamed up with SeaWorld in the United States to begin working on artificial insemination for their two female whales, Laura and Lovey, which currently do not have access to any males at this time due to Oscar's passing. It is speculated that Laura may be the first candidate for the artificial insemination due to her not having a calf just yet. But she has been exposed to Lovey and her two calves, Earth and Luna, even playing role as auntie when needed. So here's hoping we see a beautiful and healthy little calf or two in the future. Now on to Vancouver Aquarium, where there has been a bre- breeding ban for cetaceans housed at the Vancouver Aquarium. Due to that, the parks board has been changed and the ban has been reversed. This is due to the board recognizing that the aquarium provides a lot when it comes to conservation, animal care, research, and of course, educational programs for its visitors that visit the park. This also means that the aquarium will be keeping its cetaceans as well. Over at Marineland Canada, they have filed a lawsuit against Elizabeth Bott, another news company, I believe it was the Dodo, and Digital Journal for defamation. This is because a story which allegedly had said that Kiska, Marineland's only killer whale, was quote-unquote very sick, suffering, and approaching death. Since the lawsuit was filed, the article was removed by Digital Journal. In my opinion, both the Dodo and Digital Journal need to review all articles posted on their sites from authors, especially if they do not want to deal with another lawsuit from anyone. Also, this week, and of course, possibly Thanksgiving, there will be a demonstration in front of Macy's in New York due to the parade having a SeaWorld float for the second year in its parade. While it is legal for people to go topless in New York City, doing a public demonstration in front of a landmark store fully naked in front of hundreds of children and families who are trying to enjoy the parade is not something that should be done unless they plan to be arrested. And this just in, it seems Panama Jack, the official sun care partner of SeaWorld, has decided to end their partnership with the company. But even though there are rumors flying about that this is quote unquote due to the blackfish effect, it is actually due to the contract, the long time contract being up. Panama Jack continues to support marine parks and even sponsors Miami Sea Aquarium. Now on to my review of Killing Keiko. Prior to this book, I read a book called Freeing Keiko by Kenneth Bauer. It was quite good and explained a lot about Keiko's daily life from Oregon Coast Aquarium to Iceland and the years that followed up to his death. Now, Killing Keiko was written by Mark Simmons, who worked exclusively with this animal. While this book is quite similar to Freeing Keiko, there is more in-depth details about Keiko's daily life in Iceland. It also talks about the project, which seemed very improvised from the moment that Keiko was in the sea pen, until a few things were changed and revamped in order to give Keiko small successes to teach him to be independent in order to be released. However, as Keiko progressed in training, funding for the project dropped, and a lot of people, including some trainers, had to leave the project, and once again, a lot of the project was rushed to get Keiko free, and it didn't set Keiko up for success, but in fact, release at all costs was what the project became. This included one very terrifying incident when it came to a specific outing with Keiko. Throughout the book, you can see that illness comes in and out of Keiko's life, as well as many other things, including mistakes that were made, which actually made me think a lot about Keiko and also about us humans. Even though we do have the best intentions, sometimes even the best can turn into something like a death sentence, even if we do mean well. Now, I won't spoil the book for you, but 
I personally suggest that you do take a moment and read Freeing Keiko by Kenneth Bauer and Killing Keiko by Mark Simmons and really take a second and reflect and judge for yourself that in this day and age, did we do the right thing for this animal? Well, everyone, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. And if you have any questions, any comments, topic suggestions, and of course, requests, please feel free to give us a call, text, or even leave us a message at 619-512-3847. We would also love to hear from you if you have any updates, information regarding parks, any parks around the world, and SeaWorld, of course, or even stop by and say hello. Also, please don't forget to give us a like on Facebook and Instagram at SeaWorld Splash to the Past Podcast. You can also find us and follow us on Twitter and Snapchat at SeaWorld Splash. We also have an iTunes and you can find our podcast there as well at SeaWorld Splash to the Past Podcast. And from me and my Splash team here, we want to thank you for joining all of us. And we hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving and hope you will join us on the next podcast to come. Splash you later.